Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. Since my last video, the market has continued to sell off. As you know, we've, all, we've been expecting a market correction. A couple of weeks ago, our NYSI 9 EMA crossover system, as I've been covering in my videos, gave it a very objective sell signal. We were tracking this all along. Congrats if you took that short signal. You're up nicely now. Furthermore, the KISS systems, which you know are trend following and they've pretty much caught this entire uptrend, many of these have started exiting over the last couple of weeks. Here's the S&P 500. Our KISS system went long on October 31st, had an awesome entry there, held it all along the way, raising its stop all along. We call those smart trailing stops. It exited on Monday at 52.80 and it's been cash. The triple Qs are out. A lot of other stocks are out as well. Not everything, but there's been a lot of the KISS systems been exiting. We've had bearish breaks in symmetry on the S&P 500 over a week ago, on the Dow Jones two weeks ago, and of course on the NASDAQ recently. And after a break in symmetry, odds strongly favor a lower high. All right. So again, we're going to cover everything extensively extensively here, give you my thoughts. Again, my name is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. Founded it back in 2003 to provide advanced technical analysis, market commentary, and trade ideas and sophisticated trading algorithms, such as our 21 mean reversion systems, our KISS systems. Some of these mean reversion systems have started scaling into some of this pullback, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's go and get started with this newsletter. It is April 17th. 2024. And this is our back end recorder for our standard web page format for our subscribers. You should check out our website, breakpointtrades.com. We send out five detailed newsletters a week, but let me go ahead and get this recording started now. Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Fraley with breakpointtrades.com. This is the Wednesday, April 17th newsletter. Tonight's newsletter, as you can see, divided into six major sections, table of contents. Um, after our discussion here, we're going to get first off, we're going to talk about the admin, admin comments. We're going to talk about our SPY and ES mean reversion systems. As you know, these have started scaling back into the market a little bit. They can be early at times. They often are, but they're starting to scale in. Also, I'm going to talk about our KISS systems, our trend following systems. Then we're going to go and move on to the general market. Analysis, we'll look at the major indexes, big focus on the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the small caps, we'll also look at the Dow. We'll also look at some key indicators like the VIX, the McClellan oscillators, all right? We'll also look at bonds, IO corporate, and HYG, as well as the 10-year treasury yield. We're gonna review a few market sectors. We'll look at the US dollar, commodities, precious metals, GDX, also cryptocurrencies, and we'll follow up on some trade ideas. Again, like I said, today's video newsletter is coming out later than normal. I had a commitment tonight, so I couldn't get it finished before that. Anyway, like I said, it's been another down day for the market. S&P lost 0.6%. NASDAQ lost 1.2%. Russell lost 1.1%. For the week, pretty nice losses here. S&P 500 down 2%. NASDAQ and Russell down 3%. Again, the market's experiencing a nice pullback, as expected, overdue. You know, the market had one of the longest uptrends since that late October lows, so certainly overdue. Um, last week, we had a bearish break in symmetry on the S&P 500. Two weeks ago, we had a bearish break in symmetry on the Dow. And of course, the Russell had it. Remember, the Russell was in a very obvious rising wedge. This week, the Qs broke their symmetry. So that all spells for potentially the next rally to form a lower high instead of a major bottoming put in here. The NYSI, 9 EMA system gave a great objective sell signal about two weeks ago. I know a few of you took that short. Again, we've had some of these mean reversion systems started to go back long. Our KISS systems, they a lot of these have been exiting. Remember, they're long only. They follow up trends. A lot of the indexes are, the indexes are out now. They've done a fantastic job, as you know. A lot of those went long back in October, early November, and caught pretty much the entire uptrend. And... Um, one thing, guys, we have options expiration on Friday. Maybe we'll get a turning point around there. I do think if the market rallies right from here, 
that it's going to form a lower high. I don't see a bottom here and a rally to new highs. I think the next rally attempt will be sold. Then after you come down again, maybe that'll be a better low. But we'll get back to the charts. Let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, some of the mean, our mean reversion systems have started going long here. We have 21 mean reversion systems. I developed these many years ago. I kind of went by you know, the shotgun approach by developing as many different types of mean reversion systems as I could. 13 long systems that look for longs, nine systems that look for shorts. Next, image number three. So here's currently the open mean reversion systems for the SPY and ES futures. Again, we have 21 systems. You're never gonna see all 21 systems in a trade, guys. But you know we've been pulling back nicely here and we've had some of these systems starting to take objective long. So the CCI system is taken along here. That has very good statistics. That's the commodity that's based on a CCI being very oversold with a divergence. Has a profit factor of around 250, which is pretty crazy. 96% winning trades. Again, it can be a little early, but that's been going long. The trend pullback on SPY, you could see it had a quick winning trade a few weeks ago where it got out, and now it's starting to go back along again. Again, these can be early. These mean reversion systems can have up to three entries. The uh, QEBTS is on a second entry. On the ES futures side, we have two open subsystems, one on the QEBTS and on the trend pullback. Okay. Next, image number four. So here's the mean reversion systems, trades that have occurred this year so far in 2024. Again, we've had such a substantial rally from that October lows. The mean reversion systems were pretty dormant, as you know. You know, we had the exhaustion short a few weeks back, which gave a nice trade. So far, you can see we have 11 mean signals on the SPY this year and nine on ES. Okay. These are the new ones that open today. Second entry on QEBTS on SPY, second entry on the CCI divergence, and on ES, second entry on the QEBTS. Again, that's the nature of these systems, guys. They scale in. You know, I send out trade notifications to our subscribers. You know, you can follow all these signals or you, you may elect just to pick and choose them. I just simply give trade signals to all the systems. The systems are mutually exclusive to one another, so they have their own entries, their own exits, etc. They're all very viable systems with, you know, anywhere from 80 to 90% winning trades. So here's what we're looking at now. And this is typical on a nice pullback like we've had in the market. You'll see these systems start to go long. But eventually we'll get a snapback and we'll see these systems start closing these trades out. Next, moving on to the mean reversion systems. So as I've stated, I mean the KISS trend systems. The KISS systems are trend following. They're opposite of mean reversion. Remember mean reversion, you know, it's looking to buy areas of it, you know, when you're, when the market's in a long-term uptrend, it looks to buy pullbacks. When the market's in a downtrend, it looks to short rallies. That's what mean reversion does. Anyway, the KISS systems are trend following and they've done an awesome job about catching the uptrend, most of the rally from the late October lows. But a lot of the KISS systems have been closing out over the last couple of weeks. Distribution, going to cash. You can see on our BPT basket here, most, the majority here on the basket are in cash. The S&P, Apple, AMD, the Dow, all these. Today, the triple Qs went to cash. It locked in a 21.1% gain. It had originally went long back in October. Coinbase and AVGO closed out. Coinbase closed out with a 50.4% gain. AVGO closed out with a minus 5.13% loser. Okay, But it, before that, it had a nice big winning trade of something like 70%. So that's the nature of the KISS systems. They've started to scale out here. Not surprising on the market. Next, image number six. So here's a couple of the KISS systems that, that had new trailing stops generated today, RSG and LABD. Now, LABD is the triple inverse ETF for biotech. Biotech's been weak, so not surprised. You can see that trade's up 14.5%. There's been 
four smart trailing stops that took a long entry on April 4th. On RSG, the KISS system went long on October 16th. It's raised its stop 16 times. The trade's up 27.7%. It's done a very good job. And the reason I'm showing you this, take a look. So here's actually the KISS system chart for RSG. You can see where it went long back here on October 16th. Set its initial stop at 140. You can see it just methodically raising those stops up, keeping it wide enough not to be hit by noise, right? And today it got a new stop. It's really tight with current price. In fact, you probably have, this is probably an example of where you could perhaps go long now because your stop's only, um, it's only 1.19% away. So that's not much risk. That's an, you know, obviously it would have been better to enter this trade back here in October, right? But whenever price is very close to the trailing stop, that also could be a low risk entry to enter after the trend's already been well established. Again, this is a live trade though, guys. This has been on the website. This isn't a back tested system. This was on the website when this triggered. Okay, next. Image number eight, here's RSG on just the stock charts. First off, here's where the KISS system went long, just to give you an idea. What an awesome entry down here. Look at that entry. Enter right there. It had it stopped wide enough so it wasn't hit on that little pullback right after, right? And it's right, rode this trend the whole time. So the, the current stop night right now is basically right around today's lows. If you look at the chart here, you have the moving average ribbon pinching. You have a tight little coil here. Could be a little fourth wave where you get a pop here. So this looks like an interesting potential long trade. But again, the KISS system absolutely nailed it, didn't it? Next, let's go a bit back to the general market analysis. So here's the index sector table, what transpired today and this week. Again, bloody red, the Dow was down the least, right? Typical, but it's been also the weakest over the last several weeks. It started selling off earlier. S&P down 0.6%, NASDAQ about 1.2%, the Russell down 1%. Big losses here for the work week, 2% to 3% on these indexes. As far as the 21 market sectors, most were down, a couple were up, such as utilities, banks, financials, and um, for the week, pretty good losses here as well. Only really, pretty much everything is down. Consumer staples flat, but pretty much all the sectors. Currencies, US dollar pullback 0.3%. Crypto remains weak, as you can see. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, all that stuff's down for the week. And especially the stocks have been, we call, you know, there's the having event with crypto, with Bitcoin, where it's basically twice as hard to mine new Bitcoin. And um, honestly, the stocks have been halved. <laughs> kind of a bad joke, but it's true. Commodities here, the, the index DBC was down about one point. 6%, which is same for the week. Again, kind of a mixed bifurcation here, up and down, crude oil slightly up, gasoline, natural gas, copper were down. Agriculture up today. I went ahead and refreshed this. I noticed the data was delayed here a bit. So again, commodities, you can see DBC down, index down one point five six percent today crude oil down three percent gasoline down natural gas down copper up agriculture up wheat coffee so a lot of the ags that were up silver or the energy market were down as far as the precious metals gold was down slightly today silver slightly up gdx the miners up 1.6 percent as the bond market, nice pullback in the 10 year, 30 year treasury yields. Pull back right off those channels that we've been showing. Next, item number 10 shows the economic news calendar. Like I said, we have a lot of earnings this week. Thursday, we have initial jobless claims, Philly Fed, existing home sales, and natural gas inventories. Like I said, a lot of companies are reporting as well. Oh, also options expiration on Friday. That'll be a big one, guys. Okay, let's go and jump to these index charts. First chart below, item number 11 is the weekly snapshot of the major indexes. 
So you can see that what's happened in the week here, three down weeks so far on the Dow. Remember, it lost its nine EMA last week, early last week, which was a warning. The S&P is obviously well below it. Remember, I said once we lost those nine week EMAs, that would lead to more downside, and it has. The, the middle Bollinger Bands approached on the weekly S&P were very neared on the NASDAQ, as you can see, basically testing it. Of course, the Russell IWM has been the weakest. Maybe it's tagging, test, or targeting its lower Bollinger Bands. Next, let's look at the individual indexes themselves. Here's the Dow. Like I said, the Dow broke its channel a few weeks back here, as well as losing the 50-day moving average there in red. That was a bearish break in symmetry. You had very pronounced MACD divergence, and the MACD was closer to the zero level, which means it was more likely to work out, and it's working out. So it continues moving down here. The 90 EMA is now resistance, and the next support or demand zone is down here, right around this box area. That's a likely target here. Next, Charter 13. Here's the weekly view. Again, you can see nice pullback. We had an RSI divergence, and like I said, Likely, we're going to test at least this horizontal area, 37,000. That was previous resistance. Now, potentially support. Next, moving on to the S&P 500 charts. Here's the daily S&P. Remember, we had a tight coil, and we broke symmetry last week. The largest pullback in that entire uptrend off the October lows was around 130 points. So you needed to go below 51.34. We did early last week, right where you see this dotted red line and that was bearish and we've since worked our way lower slicing the 50-day moving average on monday and we continue to work lower next image image number 15 here's my discussion on symmetry again i have a video on this but here's the thing if you're new to symmetry guys so you have your trend established we were uptrending from those october lows you measure the pullbacks, all right? And then when you have a pullback that is the largest pullback in an uptrend, that is a break in symmetry. The reason why it's important is because we've broken symmetry on all the indexes. Now the odds strongly favor that lower high, and then we go down again. So that's why I stated early on in my comments here that you know we are quite oversold here. Some of these mean reversion systems are going long. So I expect the bounce any day here. But I do think the bounce will ultimately fail and form a lower high. And the symmetry breaks uh, confirm that, essentially. Next, image number 16. Here's the daily KISS system for the S&P. Like I said, this hit its smart trailing stop on Monday at 50.82. Had it, you have to admit it, had an awesome trade there. Caught almost the lows. Rode 90% of the uptrend. Did its job. It is in safely in cash. Next, image number 17. Here's the KISS system from the KISS tables. So the one I use above is a custom version. This is from the KISS tables. And this one actually exited the day before. It exited last Friday. But again, it's give or take. I mean, this one had a better exit, right, last Friday. But it also had a later entry. Okay. Either way, both of them still did very well. They're both in cash. Charber 18, here's the four time frames. Um, one thing to point out, and I forgot to mention on the daily S&P chart above, on the daily, the 60 stochastic has fallen to this 50% area. With the stochastic, that 60 stochastic, that 50% area tends to be an important support and resistance area. So that's a big area and a logical area we may expect to bounce from. You can see we lost that ATR, of course days ago in the s p below the atr we are quite stretched look at these moving average ribbons that's why i have the arrows here you see how wide these ribbons are so definitely looks like we're due for some mean version bounce action next chart 19 here's the half day chart again after losing an uptrend line and symmetry we just continue working lower there's this open gap which has been one of my magnets we've almost filled it not quite yet and these are your next demand zones below. I am looking for a bounce here in the short term anytime. 
but I am looking for that bounce, like I said, to form a lower high, ultimately, uh, something like this. You know, when, where we do bounce, I'm expecting a bounce lower high and then come down again. Next, Trevor 20, here's the two hour view. Again, we've just continued to stair step down. We filled that one open gap the other day. We still have this bigger open gap down here around the 4985 area. We still haven't filled that. The gaps are generally magnets, guys. Trevor 21, here's the two hour chart that we've been showing. This shows you some of these various wave counts. I didn't adjust this. You can see the wave three here. We moved to here. To me, again, it looks like we're in some sort of wave three here. You don't have any MACD divergence. See, to me, that's why this isn't a good bottom, even though we could bounce. If we bounce right from here or soon, I view it more as a wave four bounce than coming down again in a five or C, likely filling this gap eventually. Trevor 22, 60 minute chart. Again, remember we broke this channel, perfectly back test the channel line, became resistance. You see that? And we're working our way now into this open gap, gap, which I think will ultimately be filled. Trevor 23, here's a 15 minute chart just showing the steep downtrend channel. So that's one thing to monitor here short term if we can get out of that channel. Next, moving on to the NASDAQ. Here's the Triple Q's NASDAQ KISS system. It exited today at that smart trailing stop, 429.17. Okay, and again, it caught 90% of the uptrend going long just off the lows in October 31st. Exited right there. Nice trade. Locked in those nice gains. Next, driver 25. Here's the four time frames. Again, similar to the S&P. Like I said, we've been losing ATR supports, downtrending. We do, we are, the moving average ribbons on these smaller time frames are getting pretty stretched here. I see a DeMarc 9 there on the 130 minutes. So, again, we could bounce here any moment. Next, driver 26. Here's the triple Q's daily. Like I said, we had this tight coil coming into this week. We discussed this on the weekend. We broke that coil to the downside on Monday. We also broke symmetry. Okay. So the Q's were the last to break symmetry. You had the move and average ribbon. You see how that's a great guide. It was bullishly stacked that whole time, but then it started to pinch here and now it's curling to the downside. Whenever it's going sideways like this, or your moving averages are flattened out, that's when you're more vulnerable. When you're like this, when things are just strongly uptrending on a 45 degree angle, you know, the market's not susceptible, susceptible to big corrections. But when it flattens out, that's when you get your pullback. Anyway, there's a demand zone right here, which we're testing the top of. Next, Trevor 27, here's a two hour view, just shows that same coil. Again, we broke that symmetry. The other day, um, filled this first gap. Next, driver 28, here's another chart. Two hour chart as well, showing this coil, filling the gap. Again, showing the same thing. Like I said, this was one target. There's also a demand zone down here, and that's another support. Now, likely, I think we'll bounce before we get through that. Um, otherwise, these could be longer term targets on the next major sell off. And finally, Trevor 29, here's the 15 minute chart, just shows you a downtrend channel on the queues. Something to monitor, price can get break out of the channel. There is a little MACD divergence here at the moment. Next, Trevor 30, here's IWM small caps. Now, to me, this was the most obvious glaring market top um, a month ago. You had an absolute textbook rising wedge here. You had A, B, C, D, E, five waves. That's the bearish labeling, okay? Five what true wedge patterns are five ways like this, guys. So there's an education for you. And true wedges also always have MACD divergence. If you have a wedge, if you draw a wedge pattern and you don't have MACD divergence, likely the wedge is incomplete. That's one thing I've learned. Passing it on to you. The demand zone. We're now into the first portion of the demand zone here. And you have the 200 day moving average, which is slowly moving higher. So this could be a good target area ultimately down here. Finally, Trevor 31, here's the 30 two hour chart. I forgot to adjust this one. You can see it just busted right through the bottom of this channel. Again, very strong downtrend. 
no MACD divergence here. It is getting quite oversold. You're moving average ribbons wide. So again, like I said, we could have a bounce at any moment. So that does it on the major indexes, guys. Let's go ahead and move on. Look at some of these indicators. Chart 32, here's the VIX. So the VIX actually closed back inside its upper Bollinger Bands yesterday, but when the, wasn't a great buy for a one day as you know, price fell lower. But it's firmly back in the Bollinger Bands now, so there is possibility of a bounce. Chart 33, here's our NYSI 9 EMA crossover system. Again, if you go and listen to my newsletters from a few weeks back, I was watching this. I said the next cross here should be a good short signal. And lo and behold, that's what it was. I gave you he ample heads up on this system and it triggered and congrats if you followed it. Next, image number 34. This sh shows you the at NASDAQ with the NAMO, that's the McClellan oscillator for the NASDAQ. It is below its lower Bollinger Bands for three consecutive days here. So that generally is a pretty good mean reversion signal for a bounce. The NIMO, which is the McClellan oscillator for the NYSI, NYSE, was below its lower Bollinger Bands for three days. It is back inside. But the NAMO here definitely suggesting a bounce here is imminent. Next, chart 35, here's the percentage of stocks in the S&P 500 that are above their 20-day EMA, exponential moving average, and you can see how this was up well over 85%, basically end of March. It has now fallen to around the 10% level, so it is getting oversold as well. A lot of the lows, if you look at some of this, some of the major lows, usually occur with a divergence or some kind of up-down, and right now we don't have that, but it is getting oversold. Next, moving on to bonds, here's the high yield corporate market. Okay, that rising wedge played out. As you can see, market tends to follow this, and it's been following it down. Next, major demand zone is way down here, close to that 200-day moving average. I think it may eventually work there, but when, I think we'll probably see a bounce first. Chapter 37, here's the 10-year Treasury yield. Remember, I've had this tight uptrend channel. So it got to the channel. It's pulling back from that channel. Chapter 38, here's TLT 20-year bonds. Again, bonds move opposite a rate, so you have basically the inverse. Instead of an up, upward channel, it's a downward channel. Price bounced right off that channel line. Next, let's look at a few market sectors. So here's XLK Technology. Remember, that contains the, those major tech stocks. It's been leaking oil here. It lost big support on Monday. But, you know, again, look at your moving average ribbons. Moving averages. You see how your 20 MA was had flattened out and was, had a slight negative slope. Your 50-day had flattened out. Move an average ribbon, you see how it had crossed and was now starting to squeeze. So it was vulnerable here to a sell-off, and now we're getting it. Chapter 40, here's the semiconductors, which have been one of the stronger sectors. They're also selling off as well. Lost their 50-day moving average on Monday. Nice sell-off today. Chapter 41, here's XLC Communications. Remember, that contains a lot of those FANG-type stocks, Amazon, etc. It's also leaking oil, but still hanging around this 50-day moving average. Chapter 42, Biotech, been selling off nicely. Looks like the 200-day moving average here is the next target. Chapter 843, Materials, nice pullback. Also testing this 50-day moving average now. You can see that had a nice MACD divergence there. Chapter 44, here's real estate ETF. Broke down from that coil a couple weeks ago, been selling off strongly since. Again, with those rates where they are, 30-year mortgage rates at 7.5%. Are you surprised? Chapter 45, here's XLE Energy. Again, this had pretty much a nice little blow off top here. It had a heck of a move. We were long energy space this time, but it looked toppy up here, and it's having a nice pullback now. All right, moving on, Charbert 46, here's the US dollar. Nice rally out of this resistance, but stalling up here around this resistance area for now. Charbert 47, here's the Japanese yen. This is the weekly chart. Remember, it's breaking this descending triangle last week, and so far a little follow through. Looking at the crypto market, here's Bitcoin. Remember, this broke its coil last week, and it continues working lower. 
Chart number 49, here's another chart of Bitcoin. Remember, you got kind of a support area here, but I'm showing this, guys, because if it doesn't hold this, there's a big air pocket thin zone here where Bitcoin could melt down to the lower 50,000s if it wanted to. There's really no support here, okay? Chart number 50, here's Ethereum. This That ABC bear flag has been playing out, as you can see. Next. Jarber 51, looking at some of the crypto stocks. Here's Coinbase, lost that support. As you know, on Monday, been working lower. Jarber 52, MSTR. Again, MSTR was a long art of ours back at 531 back in February, rallied up to 2000. So essentially quadrupled, which is crazy. But coming down, it's now below its 50 day moving average. Chart 53, Mara. Here's an example of one of the crypto miners. Well, the miners are been horrid. Look at this. Quite ugly. Moving on to commodities, here's uh, DBC, the index. Remember this weekly pattern? So price stalled at the top of the coil and has been pulling back. Chart 55, here's crude oil. Rallied up to the supply zone where price found resistance. Now selling off. Jabber 56, here is the tradable ETF, USO. Again, it got up to resistance there, pulling back. Jabber 57, natural gas. Really kind of more sideways action here, slight break of that coil. Jabber 58, here's the ETF, UNG. I redrew this sort of as a wedge pattern to monitor. Jabber 59, copper. Remember, this broke out of this coil pattern back in early March, and it's been moving up nicely. Chapter 60, DBA, agriculture. Again, a little pullback yesterday. It's still hey, holding on, though. MACD divergence here, but the MACD is way above zero. So usually when it's way above zero like that, you usually don't get a major top. It's had a hell of a run from that January break from that coil. Chapter 61, of course, there's the weekly chart. Like I said, this cup and handle that I put out in January, that was a great play. Again, I'm not trying to tout myself, but that was a pretty good call. Moving to precious metals, Chapter 62, here's gold. Like I said, down slightly today. My guess is either a C or more likely a three, and then maybe we get some sort of four pullback here. This got quite extended. You can see the ratio here curl down. Again, gold had a hell of a move. From that channel break there is no MACD divergence but it got it overbought here i do think that 2448 high is going to be it for a while chapter 63 here's gld on the two hour review remember i've been showing this wave count it really counts clean to have a completed five of five back here price bounce so far we got a lower high there chapter 64 there's the weekly chart Again, nice move. Again, a good ABC correction is a buying opportunity for both gold and silver. This stuff just got extended. And we are going to be nearing the weak seasonality for this stuff, which is typically late April into early July. Chapter 65 here is silver. that was up a little bit today. Still holding that 90 MA. But again, guys, we are stretched. Look how wide that ribbon is. That's typically when you get your mean reversion pullback. Again, otherwise, the previous resistance is now major support if it, were, if it were to come back to there. Would be a great buying opportunity. Trevor 66, here's SLV ETF. Trevor 67, here's SLV on the weekly. Remember, it broke out of that ABCDE coil. And like I said, guys, long term, this looks really good. But, you know, it may need some sort of ABC pullback. You get something like that, you want to buy the heck out of it. And chart 68, there's the monthly chart. Like I said, breaking out of a monthly four-year coil pattern. My target's up here and maybe in the $50 range. So long-term long, long -term bullish, but short-term, you know, looking for a pullback. Chart 69, here's ZSL. That's the double inverse ETF for silver. 
this is kind of a hedge if you have a bunch of silver you don't want to sell it if it breaks this trend line here gets over about 13 i think you can get a nice bounce on that that would help you you know capture a pullback on silver Trevor 70 here's ag one of the silver stocks i put out a month ago this weekly coil pattern had a hell of a move like i said good pullback here would now be a buying opportunity Trevor 71 here's the daily of ag like i said it got very extended here's an example look how wide that moving average ribbon got you see that just absolutely insane and so you got your logical mean reversion but it's pulled down here to the 20 that's a support that was probably a good area to start dipping your toe back in if you sold up there. Trevor 72, here's GDX. Remember, GDX is at a heck of a move from that, that trigger, long trigger right there. Got extended, pulled back. That bounce did hold that previous resistance now support. Move an average ribbon still pretty wide here, so we may need to see some you know, coiling action or ABC to work that move an average ribbon off. Trevor 73, here's the BP GDM gold miner system, mechanical system. Gave an excellent buy signal on March 1st, right there. Very clean. I like these Renko charts. And again, it's up in this overbought territory. Moving to the final part of the newsletter. First off, let's look at some of these major stocks. Here's NVIDIA. It's still holding that 50 day moving average. That's the key now, guys. Can it hold the 50? If it doesn't hold it, then I think it leaks oil and maybe even. Fills a gap back here in the 700s. Trevor 75, here's NVDD. That's the inverse ETF for NVIDIA. Been showing this for a while. Still looks bullish here. It's been curling up. Trevor 76, AMD. Remember, bear flag played out. Lost this demand zone. Now the next support is right there. And you got a demand zone around the 200 day moving average. Maybe that'll be tagged over time. Trevor 77, Microsoft, also leaking oil here, losing that 50-day. Trevor 78, Meta, hanging on to the 50-day for now, but again, the onus is on the bulls, and you had a divergent high up there. Trevor 79, now, would have been one of our short ideas. Broke that coil on Monday, still looks bearish to me. Taking a look at Tesla, here's Tesla. Remember, it had a coil pattern which busted the downside. You all know what's been going on with Tesla. Here's a zoomed out view in the daily. We had a demand zone here, which we're trying to hold, but there's a big old open gap here from January of 2023 that could be a next magnet. Let's zoom out further. Here's another daily. So if we lose this support zone, you see this zone, the next big support zone would be the 2023 lows down in the 120 to 100 range. And here's a weekly chart of Tesla. Like I said, there's a little demand zone in here, but if it doesn't hold, it could flush down to this 120, 110 area. Finally, following up on these inverse ETFs, here's SPXU, triple inverse ETF for the S&P. Remember, I had these out weeks ago. They triggered about three weeks ago on this slight channel break, and if you stayed vigilant you stayed patient you've been rewarded it's been moving up nicely well above its 50-day moving average now Trevor 85 here's sqq same deal nice move out of here look at how the ribbon just starting to curl up Trevor 86 fngd that's the inverse fang this one hasn't broken out yet you have a really nice base here forming this looks pretty good and look at your moving average ribbon and the final chart for tonight, here's TZA, triple inverse ETF for the Russell. This has played out nicely as well. All right, guys, let's see what happens tomorrow. Futures are bouncing a bit tonight. Again, we have plenty of mean reversion systems long, so we'll see if we get a bounce. Again, appreciate all your support. Have a great evening. Take care.